Last Shift came out of nowhere, and the combination of a simple story and some very twisted and well-timed scares made it one of my favorite films of 2014. Now, director-writer Anthony de Blasi returns with Malum, an expansion on the world of Last Shift, a nightmare realm of cults, cops, pigs, and demons. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Before I get started, I just wanted to let people know that I am going to be tabling in the Artist Sally of C2E2 this year at the McCormick Place just south of downtown Chicago. My table number is going to be X23, and I'm going to be tabling with artist Edwin Ramirez. So please come by the booth, pick up a copy of Pirouette, Grave Trancers, Jungle Book, or just stop by and talk to me about comics and horror. I'm going to be there all weekend, so I hope to see you there. Malum is new this week in select theaters from Welcome Villain. It's directed by Anthony de Blasi and written by Anthony de Blasi and Scott Poiley. After her police officer father busts a cult leader and ends up going on a shooting rampage through a police station, rookie police officer Jessica Lauren, played by Jessica Sula, volunteers to be assigned to the very police station her father used to work at and the place where he went on his rampage. The station is set to be shut down soon, leaving her alone in the dark halls. But when phone calls from cult members begin coming in and strange phenomena begin occurring, Jessica realizes that the cult her father supposedly shut down has power far beyond the grave, and it's slowly seeping back into the station. To read the description of Malum, one might think that there really isn't a lot different from the plot of Last Shift, and in many ways, that's a correct assumption. But what Anthony de Blasi and his co-writer Scott Poiley have done is exactly what Sam Raimi did when he basically told the same story again with Evil Dead 2 after it was told a few years before in Evil Dead. What Raimi and de Blasi both do is tell their respective stories, improve on those stories, and then expand the parameters of those stories outside of what was told before. It's a bold move, because I feel a lot more people have seen Last Shift because of its appearance on Netflix, and just the larger availability of smaller films these days to the masses, compared to the amount of folks who caught Evil Dead 2 on video, when only a short number of those folks caught the original in drive-ins before that film was released. That said, I feel like while Last Shift was filled with tension and terrifying imagery, de Blasi has honed his talent much more in this newer version. The jump scenes are crisper, the terrifying scenes more disturbing, and the edge is very much sharper in Malum. It simply feels like an eviler film, more in touch with the depths of darkness de Blasi was going for in Last Shift. You can also tell it's also got a slightly bigger budget. In my original review of Last Shift, I compared it to Assault on Precinct 13 by way of Wreck, and that comparison stands with Malum. The setting of Malum is a character of its own, a living, breathing nightmare space. The dark hallways and openings and closing doorways are more detailed here with molded floors and dilapidated ceilings. There are a few new factors that are creepy as all get out, like a snorting pig that shows up outside of the precinct, and the detailed ghostly monstrosities who were once human cultists, but now seem to be transformed into toothy, hooded demons. As this story goes on, the setting and details get darker and danker to the point where the film reminded me a lot of the harrowing hospital scene in Jacob's Ladder. It was that intense and disturbing. While I really liked the Jessica from the original, played by Juliana Harkavi, and I feel it would have been fun to see her again in this role, Jessica Sula is a great replacement. She is wide-eyed and energetic to take this job, reciting the code of the police officers as her mantra, and eager to uncover the reasons why her father flipped out as he did. She's also tough in the face of adversity, as shown in a few scenes where other cops bully her because she's a rookie. Still, when Jessica encounters the horrors of the precinct's past and tortured afterlife, she's understandably rattled. While one can understand Jessica's actions, some of which may put her in more trouble, we understand why she might step outside of the precinct for a moment 
or let someone into the precinct to distract her from the growing strange phenomena she's experiencing inside. This is where the protagonist descends into madness, but every step of the way feels justified and logical in its own lunatic sense. Seeing Malum makes me want to watch Last Shift again. Both are very similar, both have a lot of the same scenes, there are scenes I feel resonated more in Last Shift, but then again, there are some that Malum does better with a bigger budget. Malum takes the emotional connection between Jessica, her father, the case, and the precinct itself to a deeper and more resonant level. It widens the lore, and it gives a lot more information about the cult and who or what it was devoted for. I also feel Malum sticks the landing better than the more questionable ending of Last Shift, and is a more sensible movie because of it. I'm looking forward to where de Blasi is going now that he has reestablished the depravity and despair of Malum and his minions. Both Last Shift and his new Malum have cemented the fact that de Blasi has a firm grip on what can scare you. Not enough horror movies are made by people with this particular talent these days. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be Stuck inside your reality You're Yeah.